And the reading comes from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. And that is why... A man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Here ends the reading. Heavenly Father, as we... Consider your word, Lord. Lead us by your spirit to understand more of you and more of your purpose for our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a very famous uh, passage, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, the, the descriptions of the creation of the universe. And in this passage, it's, I think it's particularly significant what God does. He's made a man. And he then sends all the animals to, get to walk in front of the man and for the man to name them. So dog, cat, pigeon, fish. And naming something is incredibly important. Sometimes people say about the action of naming something that you take control or authority over it. But that's not really what we do as parents when we name our children. We choose names which are significant or beautiful or have a family resonance. We choose names for those closest to us, our our children, because we want them to pass on something, maybe to live up to an expectation or a hope in their lives. And so for Adam to be naming the animals, it's not as much a case of, of him exercising domination, But we name the things that actually impinge on our lives, that impact on us. Vesuvius is a famous volcano, been named because of its impact on the human story. We name things which touch us, affect us, for good or for bad. Doctors name diseases in order to identify them. So naming is a significant action of showing that this being, this thing, has an impact on us as human beings. So Adam is recognising that his place within God's universe is one of mutual relationship, of interdependence. It's not an exercise in rule or dominion. Then we have... This understanding that that because of of all that God has made is being good, when we look at the world around us, how do we account for things not being the way they should be? 
I've heard a very um, powerful talk by a young teenage girl on, on Facebook yesterday. And she was talking around these issues. And she made a very important point. That when God calls us to be living out our purpose in our life, that we need to be in the place where God has placed us, where we're rooted and grounded in him, before we can fulfill our purpose. And she used the example that when God made fish, that God spoke to the waters and fish came up. So fish, their natural habitat, their environment should be within water. Take them out, they struggle. When God created trees, he spoke to the, to the ground and trees sprang up from the ground. The natural habitat is the very earth which we walk upon. But when God creates human beings, God speaks to himself and says, let us make man in our image. So as human beings, our natural habitat, the place where we thrive most, is in relationship with God. When we know what we're put on this earth to do, to be. When all the gifts that God has given us, we're able to use in his service of others and of him. And that's when we have true freedom. We don't have to try and create meaning and purpose by ourselves. But we look to the person who made us, our God, and ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? So part of what we recognize are these precious pets and animals that we have among us today is that we are connected. We're connected to not just our environment, to our village, but also to the whole natural world. The beautiful flowers in our gardens are as much and just as important as anything else. The animals with which we share, share our lives, that we take care of, we exercise, who bring us joy and companionship. There are, they're gifts to us. And may we also be gifts to them. So God calls us to steward and take care of all that he has given us. And may God give us the wisdom to be the best that we can be for each other, for our planet, and for these animals that we take care of today. Amen. Bless the Lord.